welcome to Bex Bug Out Survivor, a little night camp and I want to test out uh, this pack mostly, see how it carries for the duration of the trip. I also want to correct a few mistakes I made last time with my hammock setter. This is the AG60 from Osprey. I walked in with my trekking poles as well, a massive, massive help. Got the brew pack at the top that also houses this 500ml flask. So not only am I testing the pack, I want to correct a few mistakes I made last time. I've got a winter under quilt from the hammock, but a summer top quilt. And it'd be interesting to see what kind of temperature that goes down to. Coat, a down coat, a down style coat. So I've left myself quite open. Well, I'm spoilt for choice. I could come here where the bluebells are. Now, with these tracking poles and the combination of the Ether AG60, I think that is going to be better for the old spine. Before I came out, I had a massive relapse. Um, a nerve in the bottom of my spine fell to the floor, and I thought, well, that's tonight's camp over with before it's begun. But uh, I've pilled myself up. We're going to have a good look at the brew pack here because it's very different to anything I've done before. The brew pack here is actually the lid off the top of this pack. You can use it with the lid or without, but that is a brew pack. Hammock and all the suspension and all the tarp set up. Two hours ago this pack setup looked completely different so I went with the nylon DD. I've been wanting to use it for a long time but all winter uh, we just had strong winds it would erect this. The DD pegs a continuous ridge line from tree to tree which I don't usually do I don't like it it's just beneficial for this particular camp beneficial for me in no other reason. head end here I'm gonna be somewhere around perhaps neck level and well above my head on the foot end now the top and that is going up on a continuous ridge line and I'm gonna put it in the diamond configuration wind coming from the east this time I have bought extra cord with me both shock cord and normal cord to make modifications with tying the two channel lines together over the ridge line I've done the foot end 
just need to do the head end. So this is the ridge line of the actual hammock. These are the cords coming off the channel line. That's covered up nicely. Well, so far, that's pretty good. So I ordered two Dutch quilt hooks that go on the ridge line. The trouble is, I have upscaled my suspension here to four mil, which won't go through the little hole. And neither will the ridge line here. I've got four mil Dyneema in here. And the little Dutch gadget is suitable for 1.75 Samson line, something like that. So that's why I've tied knots on both sides of the hammock um, under quilt over the ridge line. Does exactly the same job. So I pulled down. I'll just show you me pulling this down here. Now notice the cord is coming up a lot steeper. I could actually even bring it back even more somewhere here. Last time I was out, I bought some uh, ration pack food with me. Um, it's nice enough, you know, it's so convenient. It's wet food though. And I've always fancy trying the dehydrated foods. And it's so expensive that I ended up buying myself a dehydrator. Breakfast tomorrow, scrambled eggs. I don't think I've tried much in the way of um, dehydrated food. I did a tin of tuna. That's a whole banana. And tonight's dinner is my chicken stir fry. I haven't got round to getting the vacuum sealer just yet. The way I think I'm going to do this stir fry is put the contents inside my pan here and cover it with water and bring it to a boil just see what happens because I know I need to leave it standing for a good 20 minutes so I may go home afterwards get a different pot and make an insulated cozy then I can have a smaller brew bag and run it on my alcohol stove the top was going to be the polyester 3x3 I changed that last minute and put in the nylon. That has saved, well, about half a kilo and a lot of space as well. And I've got a foot mat here on the pack and this is from the IPK, individual personal kit. Um, this is just a piece of canvas which I'm going to put down so I can put my pack on it and the brew bag, things like that. Right then, come and have a look. Now the top quilt here is by UK Hammocks and the hammock is by UK Hammocks. And I've got my IPK sheet down. So I've got a cleaner camp at least. So the wash kit, really, really basic. Got my tissue paper in there, but I went to a drugstore and bought some miniatures. These are the miniatures, shower gel deodorant and a miniature toothpaste but really that is all I need but yeah I'm glad I did bring them wet wipes last time because I had that curry and I didn't even dig my hole quick enough I needed them wet wipes too much information in it but I've dehydrated all my ration packs as well um, got a bit of gas left in that I've done a pot noodle so how difficult can it be I think I'm just going to cover with water and bring to a boil and see what happens 
the beauty of the army ration pack is you, you can boil them up just boil in the bag so you can have the water uh, afterwards for a cup of tea or coffee but uh, with this I'm gonna have to clean out the pot and make a fresh um, coffee yeah, next time I'll be a little more practiced at it uh, with a different cook set. I've got my cat hold dog nice and early tonight. In front of the pack here, bought a hat for tonight and it's kind of like a down jacket. I don't know if it is a down jacket because I pinched it from my missus. She nicks enough of my coats. Really, really compact. Yeah, so I did promise you I was going to finish telling you that story. So I just was having a bit of dinner last time I was here. It was really dark. I turned the cameras off. Uh, I was on about three bars. And it is dark and I looked up and in the sky in the dark night were six diamonds all lit but in a circular configuration so in the circle and then one two three diamonds there one two three diamonds there and these diamonds were illuminated and it was traveling really really slow across the top of the ridge here right up over there so I got the camera out as quick as I could and fiddling about trying to get it on and when you turn this camera on the backlight lights up obviously and the minute that happened it moved very very stealthily but not at high speed it just disappeared like that very out of sight within seconds and I just don't know what it was but it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen Certal formation of six diamonds very bright uh, and very very beautiful now I don't know if it was the arc coming off the electric cables but it was about 200 foot above in the sky I don't think it was arcing uh, off them electric cables I'm trying to think of a rational explanation um, and then came back here to film uh, the rest of the hammock dinner time and the batteries were completely dead on the camera on my mp4 and and on my power bank that powers the leds in the hammock everything went dead all at once all the power drained so i had to do the ending of that video a couple of days later little mayflies are out it's a sign of damp ground I'm going to try my dinner. I don't know how long to leave this, but it seems to have come back to life. A bit of olive oil into this. It tastes alright though. Even in a tent. I'll just have my head out of the door. I don't zip it up. Looking at all the stars, I think it's fascinating. And looking at the moon and realizing that, you know, decades ago, that people actually walked on the moon. You know, the, the first two people to walk on the moon, you know, were Stretch Armstrong and, and Buzz Lightyear. And they had their fair share of having objects follow them all the way to the moon. Right, I've got me electric here anyway. 
this is going in the hammock this powers my LED strand which is across the top of the ridge I've got my cat hold dog night and early tonight but the modifications I wanted to put on are on don't see why she should have a nice down coat and leave me out It's better. Whoa. I might even sleep in this because I do only have a summer quilt. Yeah, if your hammock insulation goes wrong and you feel cold in the morning, it's because the bottom insulation has failed. Last time I was out, I bought my winter top quilt. Um, I know that is toasty, toasty warm, but I was cold all over top and bottom. So if you're wondering um, which bit failed, it's got to be the bottom, the under quilt here. Got the tiniest gap here, which I'm gonna cinch up now. On the inside of the hammock quilt is this bit here which is a draft barrier that goes all the way around now I'm gonna pull mine out tonight rather than have it tucked in I haven't brought with me any hot sauce of the downside of this um, dehydrated food is can't get a brew on while I'm having me dinner. Mm, that's better. With a bit of foresight, I should have made myself a flask of either hot chocolate or coffee first, then started my dinner. You see, it's only when I mess up like that that I'm ever going to learn anything. Okay, it's about 10 o'clock and um, the underquilt's all dialed in. It's working well so far. Uh, a lot of stretch on this 1.1 ripstop. Um... I knew there would be, but uh, it, although I set it quite high, I, I'm nearly on the floor. I'm about a few inches from the floor. It's not a problem, but um, I also have a 1.6 ripstop nylon hammock, and that doesn't have anywhere near as much stretch as this, so I'll be looking forward to taking that one out also. Um, and the green off this hammock here makes it look like I'm the Incredible Hulk. Look at, look at that. And I'm, although I've had my painkillers, which usually keep me awake all night, I am getting pretty drowsy. So I'm going to charge this um, camera up and turn it in and... I'll see what comes of this. Pretty night, see you in the morning. Let's turn this off. Off. There you are. Morning, morning. Right. Where's my foot? Right. That's better. Oh. 
Well, I eventually got everything working. I waited for the wee hours of light and then fiddled about with it and got it all working. I'll show you how I did that. Well, the pitch was quite high in the end and lower at the back, a lot lower. And that was to accommodate how I pitched the actual hammock itself. I had it quite high up. If we come over here, both the hammock and the top are above head height here. As where, if we go around this way, this end here. Sorry, this is the head end. About up to my shoulder. But the foot end, as you saw, above head height. And it just stops me slipping down towards that foot end. I did use the summer top quilt from UK Hammocks. That's the name of the company. The same person who makes um, the actual hammock summer top quilt got my jacket on slept really really well at one point I, I was very warm took the jacket off just in the summer quilt well I said it hasn't gone below zero but made in Britain very simple quilt fastens around the back of the neck it's got a foot box and uh, Wow, yeah, I was warm. This is the draft cushion at the bottom. Pulled it out. Absolutely zero cold spots. In the hole, pretty good. But a lot of working out and fiddling about. could have fiddled about with it even more which almost has made my mind up that this would lend itself much better uh, to be a pad hammock by putting my Xped 9 in and eventually that's what I'll get around to doing uh, pad and quilt so it should be lightweight again this is the lightweight or super light tarp there from DD it's not the polyester that is heavier. So the next pack out, oh, excuse me, should be pretty light, pretty light. Got about two or three snake skins now, and there's videos coming up on them. Right, this is the top quilt. Let's get it out, get it aired. Made in Britain. That's the summer top quilt by UK Hammocks. One on the hammock itself. This is my emergency style bug out hammock bag. So if I had to bug out quickly, I unclip the hammock and the insulation and the hammock everything goes into there all at the same time so now I can start putting my quilts in this smaller dry sack and the quilts were just hooked on this gathered ball of the hammock here uh, no carabiners so that the under quilt at the very end here I tied off to the top ridge line and I might in time even hang the underquilt up to the tarp ridge line. Down really does compact a lot better than synthetics. And then bottom quilt in next. 
Once I start rolling the air from this dry sack, there's uh, hardly any space taken up in the pack by quilt at all. The tarp here being rolled in the line that's come from my IPK. And I just want to pop in the pegs, which should be in my pocket. The DD pegs, really nice, Sam. Um, and that's my lightweight setup. That came in pretty handy also. I'll try that scrambled egg. I'll do it the same way I did last night. Well, I learnt my lesson from last night. Make the brew first. So I just made some strong coffee. Put the plunger down on that nice and slowly. I'm going to make a full flask so I can swig on some coffee on the way home and I should have just enough water, two litres I went through from last night to this morning. I'm finding the water source isn't that easy in this particular location but um, with a good filter, even a puddle will do. Oh, magic. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put the scrambled egg in. I'll have to clean this pot out, still has a bit of coffee in. I think that should do. Fire this up. Don't know if that's too much water, I'll soon find out. And I've still got my banana to be going on with. That has just come to a boil so I'm going to put the lid on it. The pot cover is insulated. I've added a bit more water to the eggs and I'm boiling it up again. I've had a little go of this. It's um, hard and rubbery at the same time. I haven't got the hang of this dehydrated just yet. Maybe I do have to leave it quite a long time. So the army ration packs do weigh quite a lot, the wet meals. Um, but they're, they're more or less instant and that you can use the water you've just boiled your food in to have a, a brew straight after. Um, there is a lot more to this dehydrating than first meets the eye. It's lost its texture. Um, it's not soft. I mean, how long do I have to leave it? Well, I'm not doing anything for the next hour or so. Now I always suspected that that green hammock 
the UK hammocks would lend itself better for an air pad and I think I'm right and that's because there is a lot of stretch in 1.1 ripstop nylon 1.1 is just about the finest uh, you can get that's 1.1 ounces per square uh, yard of fabric I have one at home that is 1.6 and there's hardly any stretch in it at all so there must be a camp coming up sometime in the future of an air pad and my down top quilt my missus is going to go mad because this is going to stink of uh, smoke she doesn't know I've got it <sighs> but I'm going to persevere with the dehydrated food I'm new to it um, so it'll need a lot of experimentation but I have dehydrated a lot of the army ration packs the wet meals and I'm gonna bring a couple of them out next time I didn't even think this camp was gonna happen last night just putting my pack on I've got a trap nerve in my back and it started playing up bad hit the deck agony that was 10 minutes before I was due to come out um, now the pack itself, I don't have that belt very tight at all. Even the belt on my trousers, when I put that on, can send that nerve into spasm. And that pack has a tight um, hip belt on it. So I loosen that right off and let it ride on the shoulders and it carries really, really well. I can't feel the weight of the pack at all all the pressure is on my legs here but with the aid of them trekking poles as well used like 45 degree angle that really took the pressure off the legs as well and there's quite a steep climb to get here and them trekking poles made that so easy two at a time like that um, almost like skiing I'm gonna give this one more go. And if I don't like it, I'm shucking it. And I'll have a proper scrambled egg when I get home. It doesn't even look that appetizing. It's too hard. No. And put the fire out with it. And there's a lot of pot cleanup as well. That's going to take up more water. Not blown away. I'm going to call it here. It's not been a bad camp. Um, next time, 1.1 ripstop. Definitely um, an inflatable. I'm going to keep 1.7 to 1.6 for under quilts. Uh, I think I will just bring out the ordinary ration packs. Um, not keen on them dehydrated foods. I'm going to bear with it. I'm, I'm probably doing it completely wrong. But that is me done. That is me satisfied. I know how to hang that particular hammock with that particular underquilt. I know what it takes. It needs one hell of a pitch. Um, something I haven't done before. And I've dug myself a little pit and buried the embers as best I can. I couldn't find my little trowel anywhere, so I reverted back to my little digging pick. But it came in handy for a lot of jobs. It's only 310 grams, that. It's not a lot at all. And this time I'm going to keep the hood of the little Osprey pack on. I'm sure it's going to carry better in because I still have a hollow space but um, I'm never going to know unless I try and keep my coffee in my pocket I hit the 
road. Until next time, take care. I will see you next time on Bexburg Out Survivor. Happy trails.